But that was not going likely not going to happen. So they gave up on her, and I went over there because I don't do funerals. I went over there and and I wanted to say thank you so much for being in my life, and I did. And um, when I left, I took from her house two little dolls, but were but were the little on her computer arrangements. She had two like those antique looking dolls, as a memory to her, and I took it along. And then there was. Bratzo was here in Los Angeles. When I came in Los Angeles... Had you seen or heard of Bratzo before? Yeah, it was one time before, but I just was trucking along with my girlfriend who liked to see Bratzo, and I thought, oh, you know what? I'm just taking these two little dolls along, and I'm standing here in the uh, in the audience with my two little dolls, and uh, I got a very good gaze from Bratzo, and I'm like, hey, yeah, help Maki, please. You know, she's in Holland, very sick. And a month later, I got a phone call from my brother because I, I didn't call, you know, just give time to die, what, you know, what was natural thing to do, you know, <laughs> what has. So, and I got a phone call from my brother. She thinks she's going to get out of here. I said, what do you mean she thinks she's going to get out of here? Well, she feels better. And pretty soon she was in a wheelchair and her cardiologist said, a miracle must have happened. Your blood clots are gone, and now she is. Um, her f- they had to cut off her feet because they were already dead, you know, dying, and part of her feet. And now she is walking again, so she's back home. So yes, that's my experience. How is she walking? She's walking with special shoes. They made special shoes with uh, with um, orthopedic specialty shoes, and she's slowly s- s- recovering and walking again. And no more blood clots. Does she know that that's linked potentially to your doll bringing to the Brasso gate or no? I have told her that later. Um, What's her reaction? She was very happy and thanked me for it, you know. And um, But I don't know if she you, you really, really believes, you know, but... Um, I am for sure, you know what I mean? I am very happy and grateful that that, ha- that has, has happened. I was just telling my neighbor that, you know. Hello, neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> my neighbor here in the line, yes. It's it's fantastic that it has happened. That is an amazing story. And for yourself, anything personally that you've noticed or just certain sort of experiences or energy? I'm generally here to ask for 150 other people, you know, and if I feel sure guilty, uh, guilty and anxious, you know, if I have to ask something for myself and can hardly concentrate on it. So, no, did I'll today... I'll I'm ask for you. Yeah, today... I, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> today I'm trying to ask for myself, nice. but I feel like anxious and cu- more guilty to do that. Yeah, so, but I'm going to try to do my best. Oh, we today are behind you. <laughs> today is me day. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful, wonderful. Is there anything you'd like to say, neighbor, or is this your first experience here? Okay, so when, you hear, when you've heard the stories from your neighbor, what, what was your reaction? I started crying. <laughs> did. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm very skeptical. Okay, so. You haven't even, you've never gone in there and done it. Okay, so then after you have the experience, come get me over there at the radio table. Will you, please? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. You. Appreciate that story. That's amazing. So my name is Dr. Carol Francis. I do a lot of research on healers and, and the healing process. And Bratso has been a part of my uh, wonderment about the healing. So why, what's your first name and what brings you here? Uh, well, my name is Dave Rosen, and I'm actually working as part of the live stream dream team oh, that yes. Jane put together. Yes, BratsoAmerica.com. Please check it out. Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And so we're doing the live stream today and getting getting this out to um, the people that would like to view Brazo but couldn't otherwise be here in person. So why are, what, what brought you into the, the cluster of this? Is it just because you were part of that experienced capacity? Or? Well, it actually happened a few years ago, and not knowing much, I've learned so much along this journey, and what happened was I have a company that does live streaming and does rentals and does... And some people got some equipment from me, and I could see that maybe there was going to be some challenges. And I said to my um, head technician, I said, do you want to go to Hawaii and help some people? Because they, they didn't know they, were, they needed it yet. But, you know, so without a budget, we just hopped on a plane and flew to Hawaii. And I kind of met everybody the next day or that later. Maybe, yeah, I guess it was the next day we met everyone. And we had a chance to help out wherever we could, and I ended up, my one-day trip became a seven-day trip. 
and I went from just helping with one thing to running camera when needed and doing uh, website construction and helping in just many ways to get this going the way it is, which has been a pretty amazing journey. Well, I understand that you would want to do it just because you're dedicated to your profession and wanting to help people out, but I get the impression it was a lot more powerful than that, that there was something shifted inside of you related to the Brazo energy, or, or as they call it. Well, I would say I've never done anything like that before, quite like that, and something, you know, whatever that was, put me on a plane. And uh, the rest was in, in the world of Brazo, it's the people you meet. It's not. I mean, Brazo's amazing, and everything I've seen is is incredible. The testimonials. We talk to a lot of people. I mean, part of what I do is I talk to people and I film people, and hearing that amount of testimonials, talking about what has happened and what has come from simply coming to a gaze live or coming to a gaze online. Um, and is there a story right now? Is you thinking that they just kind of like on you for, uh, like, this is unbelievable. Well, to be honest, there's so many big stories, but these are stories from people that I'm meeting for the first time. The simpler stories, the stories of my crew that I've brought out. The, I brought, uh, we were in San Diego, and we hired um, a friend of mine, and I gotta say, on the drive down, a skeptic, uh, even the morning of a skeptic, but she probably shouldn't have been working with us that day. Her sciatica was acting up. She had a hard time lifting the camera. She wasn't really in shape to be working. And as she walks in as a skeptic, the day goes on, and she bends over to pick up a cable and realizes her back's fine. Everything is fine. Everything has moved on. And at this point, she's like, this has never happened to me before. When this, you know, She's had this problem before, and it stays. It doesn't just clear up in a... Now, this is a friend of mine who walked in with a skeptical attitude, not expecting anything other than, you know, she's going to run camera for the day. But she walked out, um, you know, healed at that moment, feeling good. Have you talked to her since? Oh, yeah, we still, of course, of course, yeah. yeah she's uh, she's working in New York now on other projects, but, uh, we, you know, she, she would come back. And her sciatica, gone. Uh, well, I haven't talked to her about that. I should. Yeah. I should. Fi- I okay. should do a follow-up. Get back to me then when you do. <laughs> yeah. We've we've had um, one other thing, and this was on the very first trip. I brought my the tech I brought with me, Lars. Um, we went uh, tried to. We didn't know much about Hawaii. I've been there a couple of times, but didn't realize there's sea urchins everywhere. And he stepped on a sea urchin. We went tried to go snorkeling after sunset. And I don't know. And <laughs> he stepped on a sea urchin. And he's limping around all morning, all morning. I'm getting worried. I, without him, I'm in trouble. We need we need him to be healthy. And um, a few hours later, he's, he wasn't limping anymore. And I said, Lars, did you pull the sea urchin? Because he hadn't pulled the singers yet. We were still too busy for that. And he goes, no, it just stopped hurting. Wow, that is pretty dramatic with that poison, that toxicity coming into the system. That could have really harmed him. So Yeah, it's a, you know, it was, was one of those things where it just, be, after that, you know, a few hours later, it became a non-issue. He was fine. How about for you? I mean, I know you must be very touched by these people that are firsthand acquaintances of yours are knowledgeable to you. But how about for you? What have you noticed when you're in there filming or watching the gazing? Well, the biggest challenge is for as many times, I and mean, I've been to 200 plus gazes mm-hmm. because that's what I, you know, but my job is, you know. Does it distract you? It's I'm focused on, you know, other stuff at that moment, and I have to be because if I'm, if I, if I, you know, if I'm not on top of my game professionally, I can't bring this amazing image of Brazo through the internet, connecting with people at home because it, you know, I'll miss something. So I haven't had as many live experiences as others, but what I've had is, I certainly, what I focus on, what intent I bring into the room, what I feel as I walk into the room, when I get home from these, my life changes in just amazing ways. And Can you, you describe know, them, or they feel kind of difficult or ethereal to, like it's not like it's not concrete like a healing, but nonetheless impactful. Well, mine's more of a, um, you know, I, of, of course I bring pictures of kids. Of course, right. you know I bring you know pictures of life, and everything's wonderful on the home front on that level. Right. Um, but really, it's you know then I then I go to you know we're expanding our company. We're we're 